Hi everybody, welcome back to Flames Pyro Art for Beginners. And we're going to have one last look today at this Frenchie. Because we finished the majority of his face that I could show you on the videos. And now we're looking at his body, which is another area where we have to show depth. So I've marked in in pencil uh, rough outlines to work to now as we can see around his mouth area there's lots of little speckly uh, like bits of fur that need darkening up it's, it's quite dark around the mouth on this particular dog if, when you're really zoomed in so I've started adding the layers of that and you just do that you can use a, a spear shader I'm using the medium spear shader at the moment just turn the temperature down to two so I'm not getting too hot a burn because I'm just using the tip of the pen at this point I just want to slowly darken up under the dog's muzzle so here's his mouth and I don't know if that's his tongue or whatever sticking out I'm not sure so this is an area that we have to concentrate on as well to shade it in right so it looks like you know it's folding down under the subject under the frenchie in this case so we'll have a little look at it today hopefully you can see it on camera easily enough you'll have to excuse if my hand gets in the way at all there's a few darker patches and things as well on the picture which uh, you can mess about with your pictures you can you know adjust all the settings on the photo on the tablet to give you you know more vision to see more things you know you can hide you can lighten it all up or you there's all sorts of things you can do with your your image you know the, so many different options and photo editors out there I'm going to concentrate more on this area a bit later on because I'm not overly happy with that but we should be able to darken it off and fix because our light is coming in from this way so this side would be darker and this side would be lighter because this is the way the light's coming in from and it was a good tip taught to me by my wife <laughs> about thinking about where your light comes from. Now when we're starting the actual body of the dog, we want to burn lighter. To give it the perception that it's sat a bit further back. But we'll we'll play with it as it goes along. But for now, that this dog has a collar on, so I've penciled in some collar. But then we have to look at the way the dog's fur, the direction it goes in on the body. And in this case, the fur is sweeping this way across. So we've got to do our strokes in the direction of the fur. Now at this point here, his collar is going up around the back of his neck. So we'll tidy that up a bit later. But thinking about it, where the collar...
collar is the fur is going to be a little bit darker isn't it because it's coming out from underneath the collar so all along there we need to go dark to show that it's sat underneath this collar that we're going to burn in at some point Usually once you get to the body of the subject you're working on, you, you're almost there. You've, you've done the majority of the hard work on the face. And I've still got a little way to go to be fully happy with this, but I think as artists, I don't know if any of us are ever happy with the work we produce we're always striving for perfection and a, a better look and we you know well i personally you know uh, no it's it's not what i was going for and at this bit now we just so we're just having a head floating in the air. So it is adding some more depth. So underneath the here, this big area is like his chin. Is you know it's underneath the dog's mouth. You see, it hangs down a little. And this we've got is bottom jaw there that meets the mouth remember with this area you'd need to be pulling your shading in a little because you want to shape it that it's more rounded you know that it's coming out from somewhere so right at the edges is where it's going to be darkest because it's coming out from where there's the least amount of light so it's another good way of capturing some more shape and depth to the portrait you know if you really want to zoom in ultra close and get you really fine skews out you could spend hours on the chin because there's so many little hairs going off here there and everywhere but for us for now we're just going to concentrate on just seeing if we can get this seam to look right so his chin line. Let me turn it back around the other way. It's actually got a little lump. Coming out there. It's not a huge ridge, but it's something that we do need to take into account. And so when, when we're burning now, we're burning very lightly and we're, we're angling our burns sort of inwards and down to try and give the perception that it's falling away falling away under the chin so to do that we have to go a little bit darker don't we to 
try and give it an underneath. Remember, we don't want to turn the heat up too high and lose control of the piece. We, we want to stay in control of what we're doing. Even if it's just little jabs here and there, we want to have the control and not the heat. So keep the heat down to a comfortable level. So it doesn't get away from you, right? And then on our subject here, in the middle, there is a circular fold of fur because off there. This is now underneath. The dog, the dog's chin. I'm gonna to have to zoom in on the picture. Let's try and see what's going on down there. Okay, we want this now to be separate from. So we're good. We are gonna leave like a, a separation line from the mouth to this on the part of the chin. So we have to look at the way the way the dog's fur is running. So up the edges here, right, I've marked a line where the edge of his white coat finishes. The fur is all running just turn down a touch more. The fur is all running off in that direction. When you have a white dog, people say, how do you burn a white dog? When, when you actually look at a white dog, it isn't actually white. If you turn it into Say, uh, if you've got sepia or mess about with your saturations and your warmth and all that on your photo editors, you'll see lots of shading. With a white dog, that's what you do, you shade. You're not looking to build like, you know, as dark as that, you, it's light shading, but it, in a little while we'll discuss how dark your light shading has to go. This fur at this time is sweeping in here, it's still too hot this pen. I want it very light burning now while I'm Getting the feel for the shapes and the, the way the fur's running. Like here, for example, uh, I've got a line, I've got a reference point from here downwards. There is like a curl in his fur. So we can take we can take use of that to show a bit more. character and depth. Like I said, just burn lightly in the direction of the fur. You definitely don't want to overwork this at this stage. Okay, then he has his leather collar that comes around his chin. 
and there's another piece of fur that comes out of the side there. I got a reference point where his side of his body was and that was white but like I said white is can be shaded so again the fur is running off in the direction you would think which is down and away so we burn down and away with this dog he has a ridge which is another place where we can capture more depth it comes down a bit further so uh, this is like a top like the fuzzy fur at the top of the neck so you can see I'm barely I'm barely making any indentation any shade at all at the minute I'm barely making any marks as you get a feel for what it is you're trying to produce and so what I'm going to do now is rub out this line because I know his body runs off here it splits and then the minute when it goes down a bit further to here it starts getting darker again and curling round the body of the dog there is there is some dark fur on my reference picture which starts coming out in line with this mark of pop This is the actual back, like sort of back body now of the dog. It all depends how far you want to go with portraits. Usually, people are happy with just head and shoulders uh, portraits of the dog. I've done. A few where I've had to do the whole dog lying down, which have been fun ones to do. They were white chihuahuas as well. Which I'll post up uh, them into like an image gallery carousel of a white dog burn just so people can see how you burn a white dog Just touching down really light because this is this is set way back from the actual main dog's face this is pushed a lot further back so I want it in the distance and we know all the fur is running this way down and swooping off so that's how, the way we have to burn with the strokes that, that is like a piece of this saggy jaw 
area that we're going to make great use of in a minute. moment we're just shading up the shape of what's beneath the dog's head what's what's sat further back and we can rub out this line now you can use your, your put pencil lines in for markers. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you can find a reference point on your image, line it up with that. And use a pencil. Just put your line where you want to stop. It gives you a starter gauge. It's not cheating or anything, it's just making the job a bit easier getting it in line. Again, because this is a whole new section of the dog, because you've been concentrating so much in trying to build depth and shape to the face. You all of a sudden now got to totally change your perception. To trying to show a dog's body. So he's got this fur that runs down from here, but it's going off there up to the chin and round to this little spike point he's got just like to thank everybody who subscribed as well over the weekend uh, it was very kind of you all and thank you very much I hope together we can uh, do some good things we can look at some different subjects which we will be starting looking at some a different subject today I'm going to pick out a new subject to start not a dog something completely different I had seen a pretty cool uh, Viking picture on Shutterstock of this guy a Viking with a, a weapon in his hand and everything that looked like it had some good shape and depth to it. But I will flick through all the photos that I've got saved and see which ones I want to have a go at next. ones will help people the most. Let me just move my image back. It's around under here. It is actually black. Back to the dark fur under this area. That gives us a good breaker point 
for this white fur. Now this black has to go blacker and this line here has to go darker to push it down. So I can't see anything about anything of which way the fur is going it's so dark there I'm gonna presume that it's running the way it should do which is down and away right round to the collar You can see it's still on camera. So here he had, he had like a, you know, a buckle. Like that. Needed adding in. If you wanted to, of course, you can, you can remove them sort of things if you want. I just thought we'd have a go and see what happened with if we put this collar in. The dark fur goes off to the edge of the collar that I need to draw more of the loop shape there but so we'll avoid burning in that area I just quickly sketched in some reference points we could pull it off adding that collar would give us just a bit more depth because we could show the fur coming out from underneath it and just add a little extra to the body of the dog I'm going to remove these pencil lines in a minute so I'll remove them, this one now. I don't want that anymore. It was again, it's just a guide. You can line things up. Like when you look at your reference pictures, you can find points that you can line things up like say for example with this area I can line it up with a part of the ear or off the eye you know from say the middle of the eye it, the darkness starts curling round you know here so you can find points just find, find points on your photos, on your reference photos, as guides. And 
makes it this much darker just because it's coming from right underneath. So we really need to push this bit back. because I'm not an advocate for cranking the heat up high on your pen. That isn't what pyrography is about. It's not about charring the wood. It's about taking your time and building up. layers of burning as it, it does take layers on top of each other does what tell you if anybody's ever experienced speaking with Pat at carvertools.com who makes the Optima he will tell you all the properties of wood and why you can get the effect you can is a real uh, boffing at all these things. I remember the first time I bought off him, I think we had like an hour, an hour and a half conversation. So he got me the right pens to get me started because he doesn't, he doesn't want to sell you something that's no good for what you do it's a bad reputation for him isn't it so that's why I liked him because he was an eth ethical seller if you told him what you were doing and then you picked a pen that wasn't right for it he'd say to you oh, actually you'd be better off with this one you know because he's He's an engineer and everything, he knows all the stuff, so I was quite impressed with that. And there was actually an ethical seller, not just just buy whatever, just, buy, just not ask as long as you buy something. It wasn't like that, it was, you know, I'm going to sell you the right equipment. I think that's why a lot of the optimal users who use Pat's uh, products do uh, advertising for him because he is an ethical seller he's very passionate about making the machines and everything he, he can create py pyrography as well to a lesser degree but he, like, he said to me he's more like Formula One pit boss, you know, he knows everything about the machine, but can't drive it. So it's well worth just having a chat with him if you're looking to upgrade from machines. For people in the UK, there is a bit of a wait time because he, he doesn't sell them on Amazon or eBay. He sells them only through his website where you can contact him on Facebook. PJL Enterprises. I said I dislike the guy because I thought wow he's someone who's actually not don't seem like just in it for the money he's actually really passionate about the subject and that that comes off him in spades when you speak to him his passion for it so this is all brown fur of the dog's shoulder I think if you like so we know it's all running away to 
to the side and down, isn't it? There we go. Under here, under where the buckle will be. Obviously, it come out, won't it? It's, you know, you looking like that. You it's coming out from underneath something. That's how you can produce whatever you know, color or whatever. You put your line a bit darker, and the fur coming out from underneath that color. the real dark bit of this seems to line up with the edge of the face on mine so that's where I'm going to go to and with this colour it sort of waves in from underneath and then it goes under the fur under the fur there's more fur here the bridge of fur comes over the top over the top over the top still all over the top of the leather strap And then there's a tiny bit of the leather strap showing under here on this side. And then he's got his ring and his tag there. So if you're just wondering what all them scribbles are, that's what they are. But then he has this... piece that's attached it goes from the middle of the eye so it's roughly somewhere around there and I don't know what it is but it's a piece of leather that runs off but that is that one isn't far off perfectly straight line but we'll we'll ignore that for now so at the moment we're just putting the fur in that would be coming out from under the collar Even the white fur at this point has to be shaded in. To let the eye perceive that there, you know, there's fur there. Just using the edge of the pen to build in the fur. We'll turn it up a little just to just over two, just while we get this darker area in. So I still don't want to be burning dark, I want to have control and build the layers of fur. You can't just put one dark line, you know, it won't it won't look right. If 
you've been doing all the fur everywhere else and you wanted to continue doing the fur properly on the body let's say if it's for a customer or something say someone's asked you and paid you to do this for them then you would have to put it in look you know I have I have done one white dog with a it was like a love art crystal diamond collar on that was a fun one to burn It's amazing how you can add so much detail to, you know, it was a crystal heart shape, pendant hanging from this collar. And at first I thought, well, how the hell am I going to do that? But then... Just by taking time and a low heat and looking at it as you go. Look at what you're doing every now and again. Stop and look. See if you're on the right road. And you can do some magical things with wood burning. The amount of detail and stuff you can get in is... It's unbelievable. This will probably be the last video I'm going to do on the Frenchie because there's not much else really I can show you. on the, this sort of subject we've, we've covered most of the face the nose he still isn't quite finished but I'll play with that on time lapse we've got the ears with some shape to them and depth now I'm still playing with the very tops and stuff and blending all that, this out see where there's a line there that's all got to be blended in and then a bit more shaping at the side of the head and uh, there's an area here where it all comes round and meets the front muzzle and this big fat piece of that bottom lip Lucky I'm right-handed because I had my first vaccination jab yesterday. And I felt awful this morning when I woke up. Feeling better a bit now. I just thought to occupy my mind instead of sitting there stewing over whatever if the side effects of this inoculation jab but no I'll go on carry on wood burning that I do every day <laughs> said I, I fell in love with it that much that I don't stop Wood burning different things. But it's good to broaden your horizons to, well, personally, I think it is, than just concentrating on animals. It's good to look at different themes, you know. There's plants, there's, there's machinery. weapons as there's them um, what the, 
can what they call them uh, with all the squiggly stuff coming mandala a mandala or whatever I've seen people doing some pretty cool burns of them so it's good to experiment with as many different subjects as you can broaden your depth of knowledge so I do is I look through Pinterest, uh, not Pinterest, I shut a stock get like 10 images a month that you can download that are really high quality images Just search through on keywords, have a look what images come up and just play around on there, see what pops up that interests you. You might see a really cool photo and you think oh, that'd look good as a as a pyrography wood burn. Obviously there's certain things that don't suit. Most things do. So, as I was saying, even with with white dogs, I'll put it in at this stage because this will be the final uh, wood burn tutorial of this. When you're burning white dogs, any white areas, you will think you'll have to go really light, which you do. You know, because it's a white dog, you're just shading the dog. But then you have to allow, if you're sealing the wood with like a spray, you know, like plastic oak, uh, matte finish or min wax. You can paint min wax on, I don't know if min wax do a spray can one as well. But if you're sealing the artwork, then your wood is going to change colour. It's going to darken quite significantly and if you left lines as light as this when you sprayed they would disappear so a good thing to do is test get a piece of this is on birch ply this piece I've been doing get a piece of birch ply burn something onto it easily you know something that's not like really intricate and test the sprays out and see how dark it takes it and you will be amazed how much detail that you've put in on a white dog all of a sudden it's gone because the spray has darkened the wood off So you do have to go darker than what you would think to allow for the discoloration of the wood when you're spraying. But maybe when I finish this portrait, we can have a look at the different uh, sealants that you can use to when you finish your piece you seal it sign it seal it and then it's officially done the 
might have a look at how the sealants are uh, discolour the wood so much. I think you'll be quite surprised to see. All this fur here is all running off this way. And so we did have a split point there where there was like a step. So I'll use that for a bit more depth. If you burn underneath it, a slight shade darker, you can add like an extra layer of depth. How long have we been going? 51 minutes. I'm going to stop in a few minutes. I'm not going to go any longer than an hour because you're going to get bored of listening to me so I'm going to stop at an hour on each video and an hour really is too long but you don't get much done in an hour oh we have covered a few things there in this tutorial for you to think about with your wood burning projects think about your sealant When you're doing white dogs, play with the picture, get the picture onto a tablet or your laptop or whatever you're using. Turn it into black and white, to turn the saturation down. Play about with the warmth or the sepia or whatever settings and find all the shading areas. And with a white dog, that's what you're doing, you're adding them shading areas. I want to try and break. his fur would be coming from down and underneath wouldn't it it'd be curling up and over if you're doing your break point so that's where I want my break point to be that line so the fur from underneath will be coming up and over or really down and under doesn't matter which way you want to go. Or you can use, if you use the edge of the shader, you see it goes a little bit too dark at times. If you touch with the edge, I'm only on heat setting two. I got a dark patch there that I'll be able to get away with. always looking for opportunities to give the piece more depth that's what you're looking for all the time always trying to find an area where you can show that there's depth under here it's just dark just
just as, as dark as you want to go. But don't forget I've got his jawline in as well there. I've got this is the bottom lip, the bottom part of the chin. And I don't want to lose that. Okay, I think that's just about coming up near an hour. So we got a little bit started on an underneath of a dog. I'm sorry we didn't get a great deal done. Hopefully some of the things I spoke about today have given you things to think about. With when you're burning white dogs, they're not actually white. Said I will post up like a, I'll put a little carousel or something up of some of these white dogs that I've done just to show you the, some of the stages. I think I've gotten through several stages of them. It was a, a, one last weird thing I'll tell you. Um, I remember when I got my first like commission pieces for pets, and it was a white dog. The very first one was a white dog. I thought, I'm going to do a white dog. <laughs> and part of the groups I was in at the time, a uh, really nice lady who has a YouTube channel called Drawing With Fire, Valerie, she guided me with the tutorial videos and chatting to other people on pyrography groups on Facebook about what to do when you've got a white dog. And funnily enough, the funny thing is, White dogs are actually easier to wood burn than a black dog. <laughs> I don't know, it's a crazy thing that, but it's true. There's so much more work has to go into a black dog than a white dog. If you get a white dog, happy days. <laughs> They're a lot easier to do. On that note, I will say happy burning to everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in and listening to me waffle on and do a bit of burning and hopefully give you a few things to think about and I'll see you in the next lesson on the next subject. Like I said, this will just time lapse the rest of this out now. So you can see that I can actually finish your piece. Should only take the rest hopefully of today to have this unfinished and then we'll look at uh, something new and exciting to burn because I'm past burning a dog for dogs for the time being. Spent a good bit of time on this French Bulldog experimenting with different things. So I'm looking to look for something totally different next time. So take care of yourselves. Stay safe, everybody. And thank you very much for tuning in. Hit subscribe and like. If you want to be notified of future videos, I will be adding lots and lots of tutorial videos onto the channel because I do burn seven days a week. So there will be lots of videos coming at you. Okay, thanks for tuning in guys.